Syria's foreign ministry has condemned Israel's airstrikes on Hama province on Friday as criminal aggression. Ministry added attack was a blatant violation of the sanctity and sovereignty of Syrian territory in addition to legitimacy of human rights and international law. It called on the UN and UN Human Rights Council to condemn the aggression. Israeli warplanes targeted the Hama countryside early Friday. Damascus said its air defenses intercepted a number of Israeli missiles. However, four people, including two children, lost their lives in the attack. And joining us out of Bristol to try to make more sense of the, from all of this is Tony Gosling, investigative journalist. Hello, Tony. Hope you're doing well, safe and sound, and uh, good to back, have you back on the press to you know, get your uh, perspective on things. Uh, if you can, help us try to figure this out. What's Israel doing time and again, and with what authority is it conducting strikes continuously, day after day, week after week, year in and year out now, on Syrian uh, territory? Well, the uh, authority that the Israelis have is really just the law of the jungle. It's uh, survival of the fittest. They see themselves as the fittest, and they are punching away in Syria uh, wherever they feel like it. They've got no interest in international law, no regard for international law. They've shown that, of course, with uh, literally scores of United Nations resolutions to do with respecting the original resolutions at the UN which created the State of Israel and holding them to account for those things. For example, uh, fair treatment for the Arab population, which a lot of people were worried about uh, after World War II when the Israeli state was first corrected. But they've ignored all those, uh, run roughshod over that, and they've created now through uh, their uh, racist uh, laws that they've created in, uh, in Israel over the last couple of years, really an apartheid state. And it's fascinating here in Britain because when uh, the South African apartheid was raging, something that the British Empire was responsible for largely, uh, along with uh, white supremacists in South Africa, uh, we have completely ignored, it seems, uh, the racism and the apartheid going on by the Israeli state, by the Israeli government against the Palestinians. Uh, and anyone that actually visits this part of the world, dares to visit this part of the world, will see this racist attitude an apartheid attitude. The Palestinians are treated as if they are untermensch, uh, in a similar way to the Jews were treated by Nazi Germany. Uh, this is an absolutely appalling disgrace. And yet the Israelis uh, ignore all those resolutions that the world, um, world opinion and world diplomats have um, laid at their table. They've just ignored them. And that's exactly what they're doing in Syria. They're ignoring international law as well with the arrogance that we've come to expect from Netanyahu and his friends uh, in the Likud party, and they're just bombing whoever they want and wherever they feel like it in other countries. The excuse that they come up with each time, whenever they admit to these things, which is very rarely, because they're also very cowardly in that they will not um, publicly admit what they're doing. So these things happen, but the Israelis say, we ne neither confirm nor deny this has taken place. So in that way, they're, they're, they're really sneaks, you know, international sneaks. So they claim that Iran, uh, Iranian forces are uh, in Syria, and they claim that Hezbollah is in Syria. Well, that's true. They are, and they're there because they are welcome, and they've been invited, just as if people uh, invited their friends round for a dinner party. That's what you do with your friends, because you trust your friends. They do not trust Israel, um, and they have absolutely every right to be in there. Hezbollah is a domestic political movement, which is a massive amount of popular support in the country, whether or not uh, Israel likes it or not. So Joe Biden is in an interesting position, isn't he, as the newly inaugurated US president. He could put a stop to these illegal bombings uh, immediately by the Israelis in Syria. And by the way, back uh, in last year, in 2020, there were 40 separate attacks by the Israelis. That's pretty much one a week. In, in Syria, illegal bombings of various sorts, where hundreds of people in total were killed, uh, and 135 different targets were targeted, mostly by these uh, low-level, or uh, I'm not sure actually what altitude they're at, by Israeli jets, but of course also by missile strikes, I, I imagine probably by drones too. So the uh, Syrians uh, sh could and should, in my view, be shooting down these Israeli jets as they overfly Syria. And I wonder if that's what one of the things we'll start seeing. Uh, now, 
Of course, all these actions by the Israelis are provocations, and what the Israelis are looking for is a response. They want the Syrians, they want Assad to react to what they're doing, and I think it's absolutely incredibly brave uh, of President Assad and the Syrians to simply suck up these Israeli provocations. They've shown that they're far more mature and far more prepared to do the right actions to stop escalation of conflicts in the face of all these provocations. And the only way the Israelis can get away with this is because of the supine support from the almost the entire Western media. And they look upon Israel as their great ally, their great friend, even though, like Saudi Arabia, they have caused so much trouble and they seem to be trying to start wars and in the Middle East every five minutes. And that's the thing, when they do enjoy that much support and protection, especially from strong Western powers, why do they need to be so aggressive toward their neighbors, Tony? Well, it seems to me it's a kind of uh, partnership agreement where the West would rather like to, to control the Middle East for all sorts of reasons, not least mm. of which is actually to control the spiritual aspects of this. Now, you know, cities like Jerusalem are Im immensely important to uh, the Christian, the Jewish and the Islamic faiths. And if you can control cities like that, then you can also control in a peculiar way those faiths. And you can try and change those faiths in the way that you want to see them. For example, through the extreme forms of Zionism, which mean that uh, the, the Israelis are almost like a kind of master race in the region and they would treat everybody else badly. And they, they use, I think, corrupted uh, rabbis in order to justify the, that to themselves in a similar way to uh, Islamist corrupted mullahs have been shown to be indoctrinating uh, some people who are rather too credulous into becoming mercenary terrorists. Now this is not what the Bible teaches, it's not the, what the Quran teaches at all and so what they're trying to do is occupy those spiritual and religious spaces both physically uh, and metaphorically and twist them and turn them to their own devilish ends. But Biden could put a stop to this right now if he really wanted to as the new American president. Wouldn't it be wonderful if he decided to do something to stop the $4 billion annually, which is being sent uh, over from the United States free of charge as a gift to the Israeli state to keep propping it up. And by the way, every year there's also $8 billion in loan guarantees the United States gives freely gives is basically insurance so that if a deal falls through the Israeli company gets paid out anyway um, so these loan guarantees of 8 billion annually and 4 billion in gifts is an easy thing to, to rein back slow down shut off for Biden if, you know although there'd be political pressure in, in uh, the United States for him to do that that is not that it would be very very simple for him to even talk about OK, we're going to rein back the uh, gifts that are being given to Israel. We would see this bombing stop immediately. And that has been what is now actually a quarter of a trillion dollars that's flowed from the United States to Israel since the end of the Second World War, since 1946. To put a stop hmm. to that would put a stop to the abuses of international law, human rights abuses and murders by the Israeli state in Syria. Well, good stuff, but Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure to prick your brain on stuff like this, Tony. Stay safe until we see you again. For Bristol there, Thank Mr. You. Tony, you bet. Tony Gosling there, investigative journalist.